Hey there, I am Rishi and I'll be talking about incremental static generation with Next.js and Layer 0. More about myself, I am a solutions engineer at Layer 0 by Limelight and I'm also a story block ambassador. So feel free to reach out to me in case you're trying any of them. Now let's look at what you can expect from this talk. I'll be covering what is IST, the benefits of IST, the drawbacks, and how you can implement IST with Nuxt.js and Layer 0. But first, what is Layer 0? Layer 0 is an all-in-one Jamstack platform that you can use to develop, deploy, preview, and monitor your front-end. Our jam is to bring large and complex websites that serves up to million of pages into subsequent loads. Now let's look at what is IST. First introduced by Next.js developers, Incremental static generation helps you create pages after you have built your site. And it's kind of best of both the worlds because you only create pages that you need, but still get that static performance on your dynamically built pages. But the issues that came with Next.js ISR is it is dependent on the platform you're hosting your app, and it also requires an integration within the framework. Some platforms still support IST only with Next.js. But with Layer Zero's general approach, you can do IST with any framework. Now let's look at an example of IST. This is an official example for Next.js named as Static Tweet, in which you can create pages based on tweet IDs. With fallback true, you can choose to show a loading placeholder while the data is being fetched for the first time a user visits an unbuilt page. But in the background, that page after is rendered, is cached, and the data response for that particular page is also cached. So that the next time a user visits the same page, they get to see that static build of the page. The other way to do IST is by fallback blocking, which is the preferred method in which if a user visits an unbuilt page, the request is first server-side rendered. In this case, the data is fetched on the server and then the built page is sent to the client. But the first user is bound to see some loading before the request gets fulfilled. but the next visits would still get that static super fast response. Now let's look at some benefits. With ISD, you can create pages on demand and that's pretty much ISD, right? But with that, you don't need to redeploy your website anymore. And now you don't need to pre-render your pages because you can create pages on demand. With layer zero, you can choose to keep cache or invalidate that between deployments. Or if you want to invalidate a specific page, use Layer Zero's console or the REST API to invalidate cache based on regular expressions. Now let's look at some drawbacks. The first user is bound to see a fallback, whether it's in term of a placeholder or it's being waiting for a request to get fulfilled. And some users might run into stale data. And with ISG, you, are, you can break immutability. It's kind of dependent on the platform you are hosting your app onto. With layer zero, you can choose into opt out of preserving the cache between deployments. So let's look at implementing incremental static generation with Nuxt.js and layer zero. So first, let's see that live in action. This is an example we have prepared. With Nuxt.js, we chose with static tweet, and I prefer medium, so I built it with a medium example. And now let's pick up a random medium handle. Let's copy this, and we just need the user handle in here. So let me 
pick up this interrupt, right? And I'll hit this. And this does two things. First, it fetches the data JSON for this page, which contains the data, title, items, the blocks, and renders the page. And other thing is that it request the same page again so that it's cached on the edge and the next visit see those see the same page super fast and to demonstrate that i'll reload the page and let's look at some timings so the timing of this page was 29 milliseconds and this is a whole lot faster and in the preview you see that this page is server-side rendered and sent statically now that you have looked at isd with nox live in action it's time for the steps. So the first step is to set up API routes with Nuxt. And you can do it by using their server middleware property in Nuxt config. You can link it to a custom express server and use that for data fetching. The next step is to set up dynamic pages in Nuxt. And that can be done by just saying pages slash blog slash underscore slug dot view and you're done. For data fetching, I use async data, which will either block the client side navigation or will server side render the request so that the users only see the page when it's built. With layer zero deployment, you get access to an environment variable known as API URL, which you can use to server side fetch the data. The next step, and the most critical one in here, is to fetch the same page again when it's mounted. This ensures that the page is built on the edge and is ready to be served statically for the future visits. And the last step is to configure Layer Zero's EdgeJS. So for example, you're visiting blog slash gen that falls under blog's dynamic username and it will be cached on the edge for an year and the data on the page will be revalidated per second while it will not be cached on the browser and it will be served from a static folder and in case it's not there on the edge it renders it with the app so for the first time it renders it with the app but in case you're visiting for the next time, it will serve it from the static. And what do I mean by render with the app is that layer zero will go with Nuxt and say, please render this page for me so that I can save this for future requests. You can follow the same procedure by caching and evaluating the data for the API routes. This is the link for the example and you might want to take a look at that. I'm so excited to inform you that Nuxtry Beta is out and they will be soon including incremental static integration with Nuxtry S. Thank you for having me.